Hi, welcome back to That's So Nova. In today's episode, we're going to be doing the Easy Does It Bag by Annie. I am so thrilled to be doing this bag. When I messaged them to see if I'm able to do a tutorial, they gave me their blessing and I went at it. This bag I have been eyeing for a while to make because I have so many other by Annie that I um, bags that I have made. Some of the first bags I've ever made were on Craftsy before they were boot and print, like the old Craftsy. <laughs> um, I have like three or four different throw backpacks and um, diaper bags, and they're just so much fun to make because when I first was trying to be in the bag making world, I only had my domestic machine, and I was like, all these bags are made with industrial machines, and I can't, I don't have one right now, and I didn't have, we didn't have the space then. Uh, we were just about to buy our house and I, I make, I made all my bags on my domestic. Um, if I could find some pictures, I'll definitely try to insert them. But this bag I made today on my brother's NQ3500D, a domestic machine. And the techniques in this bag are amazing and it gives it such stability. One of Annie's um, signature traits is binding your inside seam. So it kind of gives you like the bony and structure that you need for your bag. And so I wanted to, I know binding can be kind of intimidating and I made a, ba a, a bag earlier this week that had um, binding and I tried a different couple methods, but I'm still trying to plunge into it to see what is the easiest way we can bind things without the frustration of it being like not perfect stitches only whatever <laughs> when i when i downloaded this um pattern which i will leave the link below so you can download the pattern and you can follow along annie has herself a really great tutorial on her website and i believe also on youtube and i will link those down below um she kind of gives you this like airy confidence where it's okay to have missed stitches it's okay if your stitches are not perfect and somehow, some way, with that confidence, you just come out with this amazing bag. Um, I'm gonna put the camera to a different view so I, we can talk to, about different points. So the bag is a very nice size. So we have this could be made with I feel like so many different fabrics. I am going to try making one with a a vinyl but that'll be probably later on next week this week i did this with this beautiful tuba pink fabric and i made i used the matching coordinates and let me turn this bag inside out so we are going to download this pattern first then we're going to cut out all the measurements and then we are going to quilt now in her pattern and in her video instructions you can do free motion quilting. You can do what I did here, like the diamond quilting. Um, you can do straight, just one line. Um, you could do not quilting if you wish and just like base it around the edges and base it around the pieces that we cut out. But I think the quilting gives it a little bit more structure and a little bit more bony and it gives it a, such a lush look. I love the way this turned out. Um, I, I, I didn't have uh, the pattern calls for our by Annie um, zipper. It has a, a by Annie zipper, but and her zipper tape is 4.5 millimeters, not like the regular five handbag needles. I only had it in like this really weird purple, and it didn't, I didn't like the way it went with the back. So I used a handbag number five zipper that I got from my handmade space and um, a zipper pull to give it a little bit more bling. But other than that, I followed the instructions down to the T. So we are going to do the same. So once you download the pattern, we're going to start with this cutting. And then we're going to go to my machine and we're going to quilt it. Come back and cut out all the pieces. And then cut out the bias binding. And once I show you the bias binding, you're never going to want to buy binding again at the stores. Because you can make perfect binding off of the materials you have at home and they will match better. So let's start with the cutting. So you're gonna grab your pattern. The pattern piece is pretty easy. There are some really cool um, 
labels that you can cut out and she actually has this really cool te technique with this pinking shear where you can rip off the label each when you do it. It has the measurements for your layout, for your coordinating and your quilted fabric. So for my quilting fabric, I'm gonna use this, um, as you all know, I'm super nerdy. Um, this is a Lauren Warmino pattern, not pattern, design. Um, and it's the poison apples. I picked this print because even though the apples have a directional this way, it's a toss everywhere else. She, she does give you enough of wiggle room where you could fussy cut, but it was literally a struggle because these are really big prints. Um, so keep in mind when you're trying to, um, when you're picking out fabrics, my suggestion would be to pick a toss fabric or a solid fabric. Or if you're going to fussy cut, be maybe be aware that you might need more yardage to get the perfect pieces for the front and the back. Like, because you can see the on the on the zipper gusset, I have one queen, but no queen here because I wanted to fussy cut the queen for the back as well. So keep that in mind. So I used a toss print. Like I said, this does have a direction this way, but you really can't see it because of the negative space on it. It just looks like a toss print all the way around. And for the lining fabric, I am going to be using this like dark green. I just thought it would look really cool together. And what we're going to do is you cut out the quilting fabric, which we did. We cut out the quilting fabric and we are going to place it on top of our Annie Soft and Sable. Now this is Annie Soft and Sable. I have a roll of it and I, I'm planning on getting more. I use foam for all of my back, most of my backs. I love foam, but at the same time, I love interfacing. I'm not, <laughs> I don't have, I believe every interface can be used for different things. And you, I just say, don't limit yourself to just one thing. Um, so what we're gonna do is have your, make sure everything's ironed out, everything's washed or how you want it. Um, then we're going to just put our fingers and spread this lining out. Now see the great thing about um, Annie Soft and Stable, the unlike Pel the Pellon version, it has this really interesting nape where it kind of like grips your fabric. And you'll see as I turn it, like how it's not, see how it's not separating? It's because of the formula that she created. Like, I'm telling you, sometimes it's worth it just to pay a few pennies more for something really fantastic because it's worth every penny. <laughs> so then we're going to put our coordinating fabric. With that being said, we're going to pop a pin on each edge. I'm going to grab my little pin cushion, my pumpkin pin cushion. <laughs> And we're going to pop a pin on each edge. And as you see, when I'm t like moving it, like the bottom fabric is not like adjusting. And that's something that, I mean, it's not slipping. That's something that I really appreciate. Then I'm going to just flip it over to make sure that the pin got caught. And I can see that there's like a bubble of fabric right here. So I'm just going to smooth that out and repin it. All right, and then you choose your you you quilt this piece. Like I said, you can free motion it. Um, I did diagonals, and how I did my how I did this bag is I went off the sixty inch. Um, not the sixty inch. There's a forty five degree angle, a sixty degree angle, and a thirty degree angle on your ruler, and you can go off of one. Basically what I did is, let's say I wanted to use a 30 degree angle. I place the 30 degree angle directly on the fabric, which you see the line lined up, and then I would mark a line from here to here. And then I will make one inch apart and then do it on the other side and it gives you a different thing. But for me, for the, the Tula Pink one, I use a 60 degree angle. So 
you do different angles. I think I'm going to do just straight lines up and down. And this is the tricky part. In bag making, we, we love heat friction pins, but every time you hear anybody that is using them, they always say, keep them in your seam allowance because once it gets under 32 degrees, the transfer marks reappear. So <laughs> you might have this beautiful design, you iron it all those away, you give it to somebody for a holiday present, bam, it's snowing outside. All of a sudden they see your red line marks all over their back. <laughs> so that would not be, that's not what I would want. So I am going to do, you could do clover chalk. If you do clover chalk, <laughs> again, I know it's, I'm sounding like a record, only get the white, I repeat only the white all the other colors stain and they don't brush off you always can do a sample test on your fabric on strap fabric to see if it just brushes off um i also really really like the fawn and porter chalk pencil because i feel like this the powder sometimes the residue can just fall out like mess like not, not mascara but like um powder like you put on your face like you know we cry. you could you could see that uh foundation <laughs> you can see that i'm not the best with makeup terminology so we're we're also going to be using a um a coordinating fabric where we're going to be making our bias binding i chose this um one yeah it's not lime green but it matches the green apples just uh, it matches the green apples just as enough and it's like a Kelly green and um, we're going to need woven interfacing for the handles. I'm using so fuse and I will put down the information in the description area where you can get that too. So my zipper, I'm going to be using this black and green zipper tape that I got from uh, handmade space. I'm going to be using green polyester thread and my zipper. I thought it'd be fun to throw a poison apple into the mix and use that. So first I'm going to put this on the side and we're going to cut out our coordinating fabric so that way they're ready to go when we're done. This, this fabric I got a Joann's. I'm not a huge fan of it. I mean, I love the color, but man, does it wrinkle. It just wrinkles so bad. So we're going to cut out the first, um, uh, the first amount of yardage. Now, when I looked at by Annie's video, cause I had to see it, she did something that was very unique. I'm always used to cutting, just relying on my ruler and the numbers of the mat. She relies solely on her ruler. And I found that really interesting and it made me try to do it on that bag and it works. This is a 16 and a half inch square ruler. Uh, she suggests a 15 to a 16 and a half inch ruler and it's massive, but it gets the job done. So I'm going to cut out the first square. just using the ruler like suggested in the videos i'm not giving out any measurements so please buy it. please 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 go get the um download the pattern so you can follow along it's free so there's no excuse i have thread everywhere So this is going to be for our binding bias and let's see, I'm going to put that on the side and then I'm going to do the handles and the, bi the binding that we're going to need for the sides.
and not knock everything down while I'm doing it. <laughs> That's the key for me. <laughs> I'm ultra clumsy, so it happens a lot more than you think. And just following the the kind the layout and I'm not gonna lie to you, this kind of following the ruler scene, the ruler lines. I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't figure out this sooner. <laughs> like I'm so used to following the grid. And she does this really cool thing, right? When she's measuring things, if it's in an awkward position, she just moves the mat. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Wait, this is witchcraft. I don't know about this. Why don't I know about this? I got I got the pattern out. I was watching the video. I had my scissors. And then I realized that she only uses the scissors when she's trimming threads when she's sewing. So I was like, yeah, okay. I've been doing something wrong for a very long time. <laughs> Not wrong. Let's just say different. And then this will be the last piece for that. Also, she really does encourage you when you are using the ruler to use your hands, splay your fingers so you can have, you know, optimal control and pressure on the fabric so it doesn't slip. I learned a lot. I loved learning and I feel like this is a great learning technique situation. I have my two um, fusible that I'm going to fuse for um, the handles. Cut one of these way too long. All right. So I have my fusible that I'm going to have to heat and iron on for the handles. I have the two binding tabs that we're going to use for the side of the gusset. And then I have our binding bias tape. With this, you just, you're going to follow the directions on tape. Well, it's only really one page. We're going to cut this in half. This always made me nervous when I made, when I was doing um, bag work because I like bias binding. I sometimes get nervous making it, but I like her method a lot. So, we're gonna have a, a mountain and see how this is biased right here. It's, you see that stretch? This is what you want. So we're gonna have a mountain and then a peak. We're gonna put these together like this and have one fourth of an inch dog ears on both ends. Pop some pins in it so that way it does not shift. And we're going to take it to the sewing machine and we're going to sew one fourth of an inch. And we're going to sew that when we are going to when we quilt this bag. And then when we come back to the table, I'm going to show you how this is open and how we're going to cut that and make our bias binding. So I'm going to bring this over to the sewing machine. But first we're going to need to draw our quilt lines. 
make sure everything's smooth. All right, so I'm gonna draw one inch. I'm, I, I'm going the longest part, I'm gonna draw a one inch line going down. Now, if you have, if you're working on your machine, if you have a walking foot that has a quilting guide, you could definitely use that. Um, my 5550 does not have that in, at all. So. We're gonna draw lines. And if you watch my channel, you know I like to draw my seam allowances and lines anyway, so it's not that big of a deal for me. <laughs> it makes it like it makes me feel like it's more, I'm more confident. And I'm just drawing a line that goes back and forth, faint line. And I'm using the grid at the same time. So like I'm three inches away. Now I'm gonna move the grid line to the four and go from there. Now her patterns also come with all the a little bit of extra stuff when you're fussy cutting, because when you quilt your fabric shrinks from um it literally quilting. <laughs> Grab my hair roller right now. Fix this one. Oh, the reason why I think I like the fawn and porter because it erases easily. <laughs> Oh, and then she has like this really cool trick. Like if your, like your rulers are not long enough, she uses like another ruler. She'll bring in another ruler up here, and just continue the line. It takes you like I said the quilting ruler helps especially if you're familiar with quilting then you you know but if you're like me and you're like hey I need that extra boost to make sure that I get the line straight then shock pencil there are water soluble pens um just definitely make sure you you test them first Because some fabrics respond differently to different pens and pencils. Like the blue chalk, unfortunately. Oh my gosh. I had ruined something so pretty. I had no idea. I thought it was just going to like dust off. No, it just like to stain. It's same with the yellow. Should have knew better. Let me pop this pin back in here. Just lining it up now with the 
the one inch line that I previously made. And you can do a lighter hand as long as you can see it, and that's all that matters. Okay, so I'm going to finish these last two up and then I'm going to meet you over at the machine. Okay, so we drew the lines onto our quilted piece and now we're going to quilt them. So I'm going to do a couple lines for you and then we're going to finish quilting it, bring it to the table, we're going to cut everything out. We're going to cut out the pieces that are supposed to be from this quilt and then go back and to the machine and you're going to re-stitch. So let's say this is your shape, this circle. You cut out the circle and then you're gonna stitch a 1 8 of an inch around the circle so that it won't lift and you won't see neck foam or there won't be any twisting or bunching. But first thing before we can cut out any pieces from our fabric is we need to quilt it. I'm doing a one inch line all the way down. I drew it in chalk. I'm over at my machine. You can use contrasting thread, coordinating thread, whatever, whatever you like and you have at it and you just, so there's no back stitching because we're going to be cutting through so we don't know where we're going to cut out so there's no back stitching. And you're quilting, you just quilt. I'm at a three stitch length. I gotta see what is, something is on my belt there. Isn't it weird when you can hear your machine? And you're like, yeah, this is on, this is what's wrong. Kind of like the cars. Make sure you cut your threads beginning and end. And there's a reason because when you're quilting, you don't want threads to get caught in the belly in between stitches and it just gets messy real quick. No back stitching, just quilt. Okay, so I know you're going to be tempted to like try to stitch like one eighth of an inch and go down, but what that's going to do is it's going to bring in and pucker and you're going to lose more, um, you're going to lose more, you're going to lose more, um, I can't tell today, lining. So we're, you're going to quilt each line and then you see how lush that looks that's when our lining we have our exterior and we're going to cut pieces out of this according to the pattern there's measurements and then we're going to cut each piece so finish quilting and then i'll meet you back at the table all right we're back at the table after we made our quilt sandwich and no if you're noticing my nail polish is different this is part Tech, not technically part two, but part two. I was trying to finish it before my convention, but I didn't want to mess this up because I love by Annie. I didn't want to like go fast and not show all the process because to be perfectly honest with you, there's going to be a step that you're going to see me fumble on because I always fumble on it, but I'd rather fumble with you. And therefore, if I make errors, you could totally learn from my mistakes. See? <laughs> Um, so we quilted this. I just did the one inch um, mark in like one inch quilting. I didn't do the diagonals or um, diamond shape. <laughs> so I did something really quite simple. So we're we're gonna about to cut this out. I have my handy dandy ruler, and again, like I said, there's something I highly suggest you to watch by any videos and because there's something that I learned something that I guess I really never pay attention to. I focus so much on the mat and never actually using my ruler to cut out all the measurements. And I think that's pretty fantastic if you think about it. So with this quilt sandwich, she does tell, tell say in the, um, met, um, in her video that she created, she creates this with enough leverage so that you can get your fussy cutting down. And I'm gonna cut out the first one. And just cut it.
line it up with my ruler. I never, it, like, I really never do that. I always line it up with the mat. I never thought about lining everything up with the ruler. And I, I'm not going to lie, it kind of makes a huge difference. After I, I did it, I noticed a huge, big difference. So this is one front panel. And I'm going to make cut out another one. And she does give you all the instructions on the measurements on this free pattern. Pattern. Easy does it kind of, kind really does, this pattern makes it easy for you. I was going to cut out the pattern pieces ahead of time and just bring them to the, the table, but I felt like showing you the round, how to round the corners was important because the pattern gusset and the zipper panel are made just for um, this pattern. And if you're off by a half an inch, one eighth of an inch, or you're not, you didn't put your pattern piece at, you know, from Adobe or um, it can greatly kind of misalign your shape. So let's cut out the the side strap piece, side strip piece. Okay, this one's a little longer, so I'm going to use this ruler instead of that. Sorry, <laughs> I'm like trying not to mess up. She does do um, also. She believes in like bulk cutting. So you can save time. But if you're like me and you're like hesitant with the ruler, <laughs> then it's fine. Take your time, cut once, no messing up. I'm going to measure this one more time. One zipper panel. Okay. I'm just making sure this is. Cutting off any little extra burrs. All right, and then the last panel we're going to be make cutting out.
I'm just lining everything up. I'm that person that checks the measurements a hundred times because there's nothing worse than when something doesn't fit. And I'm like, oh my God, what did I do wrong? <laughs> so we have the bottom gusset and we have the two zipper panels. We're in the pattern, she suggests you go around each one of the pattern pieces at one eighth of an inch. So that way, when you're sewing them together, if it, won't, if it flips up, you won't see um, stabilizer. And it's actually quite, it is really quite genius. Now for the front panel, she has a two, a two and a half inch template on, um, for the circles to round them out. I do have a creative grid ruler that's two and a half inches. And what we're going to do is we are going to match the circle where it, where it edge to edge where it's not like this, where there's fabric showing. It's right be below uh, the, I'm trying to see if I, how I can explain this. You basically are matching the edge of the circle to the edge of your fabric. And it's not going, the circle's not extending over and you're not going in so much. So we're going to cut around here. Now there's a really important part about this two and a half pin circle. A lot of people could be tempted and be like, oh, I have like wasabi tape and I'll do this. Or I have a cup and I'll do it. If it's not the actual two and a half inch circle, it will not fit in the gusset really well, and you would have it problems. You will try to you you would have to do a lot of manipulation and easing to try to get that in. So I'm going to cut all four corners with this. I I find it easier to do with a smaller rotary, and most of the times I'm not going to lie to you. I draw it on and then cut with scissors, but Annie does it in her video with rotary, so I'm doing it and trying to like. Get some of Annie's confidence because, man, I thought we were going to go in with um, scissors and half a thing. It was just trimming tails. <laughs> I was like, okay. So we have our nice rounded edges and we're going to go around one eighth of an inch when we get back to the machine. And oh, with creative grids, there's an area that has like really, um, I don't want to say tacky, it's rough so that it doesn't slide on your fabric like a smooth side is. So you put the rough side down, match edge to edge. And go around. They have creative gr uh, rulers has a lot of circle um, rulers and they're amazing. I'm trying to get on my circle game and also on my triangle game because 45, 45 degree angles with a triangle is so much easier than when you're trying to do it with a ruler. <laughs> okay, so we have that. Now our next and final step for the table before we go over back to the, to the um, sewing machine is that you're going to have your two binding pieces where you're going to have your handles fused with your woven interface. I'm using so fuse plus and fold it into each other and press because we're going to top stitch these before we put the handles on. And then we need our bias binding. So beforehand we had our fabrics and I told you we we're making a mountain and then a peak and sewing it one fourth of an inch together. And then we're going to cut, cut the bias binding. Now you want to make sure you're cutting on the bias because there's a stretch. The other way there's none. That's how you get wrinkles. That's how you get puckering. And you want to make sure that you um, have it. If the, your ruler's not big enough to cut out the bias binding, Annie has a really cool way of putting, putting um, right sides down the mat, putting the, Holding the triangles on themselves to make a little box. And you can see this is the bias. This is the bias. This is not. So you want to make sure you you're on the bias. She uses two and one fourth of an inch for her bias binding. Sometimes she uses two and a half depending on the project. 
Um, she says that two and a half, two and one fourth is like a nicer, like a nicer, uh, crisp binding versus two and a half. Only she only uses two and a half, like on thicker seams, like when she's making the backpacks or diaper bags and whatnot. So we're going to use the ruler and we're going to go two and a half um, inches and we're going to cut away from ourselves and move that strip. Do another two. We're going to cut all of these all the way down to two and one fourth. Trust your ruler. <laughs> I know it's easy not to. It's kind of like writing with, I guess if you're like left handed, you have to write with your right or right handed that has to do with your left. It could be like, this is not what I, what, what I know, but I like when people break the rules. If that makes sense <laughs> that we're not doing something that everyone else is doing. And it gives you opportunity to get your mind working and enjoy this process of learning. So I'm going to give it another strip. Okay, so when we get to the machine, we're going to take the dog ears. They're going to be, we're going to sew the opposite. So we're going to take them and sew right sides together, have little corners that are like about one fourth of an inch and do a, uh, one fourth of an inch seam allowance and what's going to be continuous bias binding. We're about to do that when we head over to the machine right now. So I'll see you at the machine. Okay, so we're back at the machine. We have all of our pieces cut out. Um, the next step is to machine base all the way around one eighth of an inch to enclose all the raw seams. So that way when we're putting it together, there's not a possibility for the fabric to lift up and show the soft and stable. So I'm going to go around this one piece of this, the, one of the front panels or back panels, um, one eighth of an inch, just enclosing all the seams. And as you can see, I kind of fell off. So I'm going to go back. One eighth of an inch is always so tricky for me. I have no idea why because <laughs> it's like the center of my foot. Sometimes I'm like dead on. Like, I'm like, yeah, I did it. And then other times I'm like, oh man. All right. So we got it. We got it all machine based it. We're going to trim away threads, collect a nest of threads on your lap like me. And we're going to next, I'm going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from the handles on both sides one eighth of an inch and I'm gonna not try to hold my breath and make sure I get this one right I'm using um just some green Saba thread from Waywack. it's 40 weight I don't know I'm like my machine really likes this thread I don't know I okay so I want to say it's the machine I don't know if it's the owner but my my Bernina it loves Guterman um Saba thread this whatever thread but this machine it acts a donkey if it does not get the thread that it needs like I know some people can sew with a 70 weight thread or um tech 69 and I'm like I can't like my machine even with the heavy feed dogs it's just like nope not today so this is now done. We have our beautiful top pant stitch handles and I did not fall off. So mm -hmm. trickies for me. <laughs> so we have all that done. And then we're going to put together um, our bias tape. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your right side of your fabric. And how you can tell the right from wrong is that the wrong side has a seam. You don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the right side of this, which you see seams are up, down, facing it. 
So right sides together, and we are going to take the angles and place them together, and they're gonna have little one-fourth of an inch corner dog tails. We're gonna bring it over to our machine. You can clip at this point if you feel more secure or pin, whatever is easier for you. And we're going to stitch this at one fourth of an inch seam allowance and we're gonna back stitch a few stitches. And we're gonna trim the threads. And we are going to press open the seam. Now you can use your finger, you can finger press, you can use a poly roller. Um, and he has this really cool stiletto that has like a wood print where you can just do press it with that. Now the next step is really hilarious because I'm guilty of this. She, she does not iron every three inches. She just folds it onto it, the fabric raw edges to raw edges and every three inches she places a pin. And at first I was like, okay. And it just follow the process. The reason why I really love bag designers, they're artists. They are able to create something in their mind. And, I mean, and just bring it to life. There's, there's a, what is it? The method to the madness and it all pays off. Just follow the process. So we're going to just every three inches place a pin. Now you're going to put all the four bias strips together and you're going to make one long strip. A bias tape, putting wrong sides together, edges, raw edges, raw edges, and pinning every three inches. Giving all these threads out. I'm gonna have like a green nest of threads in my lap. It's cool though. <laughs> I have like massive cleaning to do in my room tomorrow. Whenever I do a convention or a craft fair, it looks like Edward Scissorhands been in my room and it just, it's a hot mess. So when there's little um, ears that poke out from your, from putting it in your ear, just clip them off. Make sure that you get those all nice and even and you have a beautiful long piece of um, bias tape and then you place a pin right here. And she places, she does this on the flat table, similar to what I'm doing, and places it every three inches. So we're gonna put this to the side, and we are going to grab our zipper panel. We're gonna take our zipper, and you can use a by Annie. I'm using um, a number five zipper. Um, and this is really cool too, because especially if you made some of the bags that I've shown, normally we sandwich the, bat, the, the, the zipper tape with the right sides of the exterior fabric and then we have an interior fabric with this because it's quilted we're going to we're going to put right sides together and let the zipper tape hang over like an eighth of an inch uh one eighth of an inch and then we're going to put, fold it after we put it right sides together do one fourth of an inch fold it in on itself and in case those all the raw edges by top stitching the back of this zipper tape and getting all those um, raw edges. So you're gonna have an exposed zipper, but it looks really cool. <laughs> so let's go over to this machine. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do this. We're gonna take the other zipper. We're going to do right sides together. And what I like to do is I like to clip, first I need to, I'm really bad at cutting threads. I have no idea why I'm so bad. I like to clip the previous panel to the panel we're about to do so that I know that they're the same height. So she likes to have a little bit, like one eighth of an inch of the zipper tape going over so that when we do the one fourth of an inch, it's just a little bit over, not a whole bunch, but just a little. And we're gonna put a couple wonder clips in here and we're going to sew one fourth of an inch going down. 
and remember to back stitch. Gonna trim all those threads or at least try in my case say I did and then have mysterious threads pop up so as we're trimming it we're gonna see that you can see all the exposed raw edges we're gonna take it to our machine and this is one that helps when you have you can switch out your bobbin to have it the match the exterior or if you're like me and you just have it like one solid thread you're gonna be fine we're gonna you could take a stiletto or you can use your finger and we're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch all the way down and closing all these raw edges. Make sure you backstitch. And because you, you did that a little bit of the zipper tape hanging out a little over the edge, it should be fairly easy to get a top stitch and it'll look like it gives it like a really cool faux piping look on the exterior of the bag. And we're going to backstitch. Trimming all those threads. All right. I'm becoming like a lint magnet right now. All right. So we have this beautiful it looks so cool on the outside because it kind of gives like a faux piping detail and then we have our exterior where there's no raw edges because we top stitched one eighth of an inch going down so it's like pretty cool right now i'm going to place the zipper on at this moment because we're going to start getting this getting the gusset all together I'm using a zipper head that I purchased from Mormino. Um, I love anything Disney. So as soon as I see like apples, or any pretty much anything Disney, I'm not going to lie to you, I buy it. The poison apples, it's going to be classic. And it goes with the whole Neville Wing thing. So <laughs> we are going to, I'm going to trim this zipper tail in. This is where it gets funny because again, we're doing things really opposite of what we are used to doing. And that's good. That's not a bad thing. We are going to put wrong, wrong, um, wrong sides together. We're going to grab one of our bias binding pieces and we're going to fold that in half and place it here. Now in the instructions, we're going to be doing a lot of sewing right here. We're going to do three eighths of an inch, one fourth of an inch, and one eighth of an inch. So, because my machine only has one fourth and a half and three fourths of an inch and one and one fourth, I drew three eighths of an inch with a chalk pencil on one side of the fabric. So, all raw edges are going to be in one direction. So we have the interiors touching right sides together, exteriors are out, and then having the um the, the strip that covers it ready to go. So we're gonna sew at three eighths of an inch. I'm still at a three stitch length and I'm making sure I back stitch. Okay. Trimming threads. Um, just stay on top of the trimming threads because things can get threads can get caught up in um, other seam allowances and it's not fun. So then we're gonna do this one fourth of an inch. And 
and one eighth. And I think this is really great because it really secures that zipper in. Um, you know your zipper is going to not go anywhere because there's three lines of stitching. And the great thing again about soft and stable is the more you sew on it, the more it compresses and the easier it is. Like I showed you in the beginning, my, my bag that I made with the tulip pink fabric, it was made purely on my brother's NQ3500D, a domestic machine that's actually doubles down as an embroidery. It, it sewed through it like butter, and I actually didn't have to use a walking foot or anything, actually. I was really excited because, I, again, I've sewn some of her patterns, and she sews herself on a Viking machine. So we're going to then take this, and we are going to cover up the raw edges. Do you, we're going to cover up. We're going to take it, fold it over, cover up the raw edges, and top stitch at one eighth of an inch. If you stop, make sure you stop on the needle down. Got off. I went off a little of the track, so I'm just gonna go one eighth of an inch over again. This is the beauty of cotton and um, soft and stable is it can handle it. There we go. Now all the seams are enclosed, and I'm going to bring over one of my handles and get my ruler real quick. And go I'm gonna measure the ruler the handles to go a half an inch down from the the top part of the seam where the zipper tape begins so a half an inch down I'm gonna take a wonder clip and clip one on one side and clip on the other side for some odd reason with great difficulties. <laughs> and then I'm going to base this handle one eighth of an inch on both sides. And my thread came out. It's just like one of those days, you know? But it's okay. <laughs> like on Office, in the Office, I watch The Office a lot, like religiously, like it's still on. My One of my favorite things is um, Poe Body's Nerf It. Um, because nobody is perfect. Okay, we have one side down. We're going to do again, right sides. This, the green fabric that I got, not the, um, the custom one, the green one from Joann's. It just, it is a frame magnet. So I'm going to... Get my bias side tape. I'm gonna put exterior with exterior. We're gonna do the three eighths, one fourth, and one eighth. Same as last time. And then we're to back stitch. Mm -hmm. 
And again, if you're like me and you're like, hey, I am bad with eyeballing it, draw the three to the inch with a chalk pencil or a pencil because no one's going to see it because it's going to be enclosed and have fun that way. So that way it could be easy going. You're not worried about, um, you're not worried about, did I get a perfect three eighths of an inch or whatever? I'm all for drawing my scenes in my scenes. Okay, so we're going to move the the rest of the bag out of the way and top stitch this down at one eighth of an inch. And if you have a stiletto, you can use that to help you with the, making sure the bulk stays inside. Getting all the threads. All right, and then we're gonna grab our handle and mark it half one a, a half an inch down from the zipper seam or the beginning of the seam of the zipper. Find clip and just move me. Let's see. All right, this is coming together. I'm excited. I, I'm really excited because I was wondering how these colors. I wanted to have like black because there's black in here. But I promise you, I always run out of black waterproof canvas, black fabric, black um, wax cotton vinyl i have no idea it's i guess i i do use it a lot but man i'm always forever out of it so it's based at one eighth of an inch and cutting threads all right so we have our beautiful gusset now we're going to take our gusset and i you're going to put seam to seam and you're going to pop a clip Seam to seam. We are going to find our, this is our sides. We're going to find our, our fronts and how we mark them is by pushing a pin in the center. I actually, I actually kind of prefer this because somehow my pins, no matter what I mark it with, it like disappears into the fabric and then I'm remeasuring all over again. Um, we're going to push a pin and, and then we're going to do it again on the bottom. And then we'll find our side seams by matching pin to pin. Like we do with the, it's very similar how we do it with, um, marking with a chalk or you know um i want to, i keep forgetting the name of the pens the heat erasable ones except i i kind of feel that this is a little bit more accurate i don't know why so i'm matching pen to pen i'm gonna just stick a wonder clip by each pen and I'm going to pin each side seam.
it's raining hard. So if you hear knocking, it's the well. <laughs> I live in Maryland, so it, it rains like all the time. I'm kind of used to it. When it doesn't rain, I kind of freak out. <laughs> yeah. I was born and raised in California, so I was used to not having rain. So when I first moved out here, I was like, why does it rain so much? <laughs> Oops, I accidentally took out one of my pins. Let me just. Mark that one really quick as one thing out of one thing out of uh, not measured. I can make the whole bag wibbly wobbly. You don't want that. You just put all this time and effort in quilting. You're you you're gonna want to have time. So I you mark all four points also with your panel. And this is like a fun time to experiment with tags or IDs. I got these tags off of. Dutch labels and they are just they just say Nova Knits and it has a little a little tag so that way if I'm making these for like a market a craft fair or what have you I can um my name is on there so if somebody's like hey I, I really like this bag I wish I knew I remember who made it my name is on there so they can google Nova Knits see my Etsy shop or see that I'm on you know um YouTube or Instagram or whatever, and they can get a hold of me and be like, hey, remember you made me these really awesome bags? <laughs> I kind of need more. And I'm I have a couple of craft shows coming up, and I guarantee you I'm going to be making this bag. I'm going to also experiment what it what it what it will it look like if I do it with vinyl or leather or like um wax cotton or waterproof canvas, because I feel like this bag this easy does it bag has like endless potential all right so let's get started we're going to we're going to do right sides together we're going to take pins and pins to pin to pin and mark all we're going to do all four pins that we marked our front and back and our sides together. And as you can see, my bag is like collecting strings, cast off threads. I'm going to put some wonder clips down because we're going to need them. <laughs> All right, so once you have all four sides, you can start working on clipping your bag together. And this has one of the easiest gussets that there's like, I'm not trying to finagle it. As long as you cut that circle, the circle, the two and a half inch circle with the pattern piece, or if you have a two and a half inch circle ruler, this bag comes in with great ease. Like, not a lot, a whole lot of fussing. And I'm just going to move that up some. Go around these corners. I think I got it all. So we're going to go around this a scant one fourth of an inch all the way around. Just like a hair below one fourth of an inch. That's, but not like one eighth of an inch, just a little, a little below. Make sure you backstitch, remove pins as you go. Remove clips as you go. 
I don't sew over pins. Now, I know some people do. I just can't. <laughs> I just, the timing of your machine, and I don't like the sound. It's like, I don't know. I've seen, like, I've seen someone accidentally sew over a metal zipper, and it, the sound of it drives me nuts. I have this thing with sound. Mm -hmm. And just take your time with the curves. Um, make sure your needles a needle down when you stop. No wrinkles. But just if the wrinkles are above the needles, you're fine. If it's below, then you're gonna get puckers on the outside. There's no race, no there's no competition. So take your time, get this how you want it. So this next part with the <laughs> with the bias tape is the part that I'm going to be freaking out a little bit. So I'm I feel like I'm freaking out with you at this moment moment of your sewing with me because no matter what I always try to get like the perfect bias binding. Um, Annie does explain it really really well. It just always makes me nervous. Anything with right angles for some odd reason. <laughs> but we're gonna get through this. We're gonna make this bag. I'm taking my pens and throw them into my magnetic bowl. I'm using my stiletto instead of my finger. <laughs> and we're about to go over this 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 curve one more time. And there goes clips. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to trim threads. I kind of want to give it like a little mini haircut because it has so many brands. <laughs> Not cutting the seam, just trimming the, the little burrs and hairs that are. sticking out. All right, so from this point, we pop it out. We want to make sure we enclosed all this. We got all the, there's no, no funny soft and stable poking out or anything. This is, this is going to be nice. All right. Okay. This is going to be cute. All right, so we're gonna put the back out and we're gonna start with the bias binding. Annie want suggest a five inch tail. This is where Shinova's gonna get a little freaked out. Okay, so we're going to <laughs> measure the five inch tail. I'm going to mark it with a chalk pencil so that I know that's this. We're gonna start with a five inch tail on over here. We're going to start on a curve. I'm just going to pop one pen. Okay, so she's like doing this bag, right, in the video, and never once did she click the bias binding. And I'm like, what's going on? It's magic. So <laughs> you're going to knock, you're going to leave five inches away, and I'm going to start, I'm ironically, a, like probably one, one stitch before the curve. And we're going to leave five inches open so that way we can make the bias binding fit really well. Back stitch. And we are going to 
to use a one fourth of an inch. And as you get to, you, you're passing the pins on your, um, I'm trying to squish this down so you can see. As you're passing the pins on your bias binding, just remove them so you don't sew over them. Or if you want to sew over them, you can do that. There's those like magic ones that are like blue and green and pink. They have like a rubbery end that they're meant for you to sew over. And just take your time, use your stiletto or use an owl or, you know, use your finger, whatever works for you. End of a seam ripper. I kind of use, I have like this huge quilting pen that I have a tendency of using as um, a stiletto all the time. Okay, so we're getting around this other curve. And you can't see my face right now. I'm doing my nervous smile because this, she explains it well. And it's written really well in the um, directions. It's just me. We all have like an Achilles where we're like, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. This is going to be the thing that does me in. This part right here we're about to do is about to do me in. So I like to stop at the round, like right before the curve gets rounded. Like, so that way... It has a nice anchor. So I'm going to show you. And my hands shake. Do not judge me. Okay. <laughs> so the way she explains is if we have our five inch tail. Okay. So this is A and this is B. This our bias. So all of this is sewn around. We we're going to make it where this is going to be in like really close. So what she does is she takes her bias. She puts a pin in where she wants to do it, and she does a little tug because there this is by binding and it has like a nice stretch. She puts a pin at where that it meets, and then she 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 folds it out of the way. She takes this is the part that gets interesting. She takes her she takes her um pins. And there's the top of the uh, mountain and the bottom. So we're on the first layer, we're going to put a pin, not in this, but in A. Where's the top? Hold on. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> And then we're going to put a pin at the bottom layer of A. To be the bottom. Okay, and then she removes this pen. I'm going to double check the top. That's the bottom. And then she removes the pen that's holding them together. And we're going to be doing some cutting. So this needs to open up and you'll see we're going to be stitching these right sides together but we need to make a seam allowance for it so this is what I did you're gonna keep, have to keep this as flat as possible you're going to have to put this at a 45 degree angle, which is not. She actually unpicks a couple of stitches when she does this.
I'm try I'm try I can't find my little square one, but you can work with what you got, right? <laughs> okay, I got I can do this. I can do this. Okay. So this is going to be at a 45 degree angle. These, oh no, hold on. <laughs> I just messed up with uh, not putting my pin. My pin popped out. So just click right here. Take this back over. See, my failures can be the top. And the bottom. You can press, unpin it, clip it, unclip it, and then 45 degree diagonal line. It helps when my pen works. My pen. <laughs> see. I'm just going to squish my back. I promise you this is all worth it. I'm probably making it look way harder than what it is. All right, then we're gonna have to draw a half an inch. I'm gonna remove these pins and I'm gonna draw a half an inch seam allowance because we need to attest, we're gonna have to put, there's one fourth of an inch on each side. So I am going to actually take my little handy dandy ruler and just draw a half an inch from the exact line that I drew. Okay, <laughs> scary fun part. We're gonna cut it. <laughs> and we are going to take right sides together and she highly 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 recommends you pop like four pins and so that way you didn't do all this work and it, <laughs> the seam allowance is all messed up so we're gonna pop a, four pins in and we're going to do the one one seam allowance of one fourth of an inch If this works out, I'm gonna I'm gonna eat some ice cream. <laughs> Cause this is the only part that I'm afraid of. Cause this is a binding trick that I see in quilting, and I always like kind of stayed away from it because I'm it's kind of intimidating. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm kind of intimidated by it. Because it does give it seamless binding. And who doesn't want that? Right? Like when, no, when someone looks in the bag, they can't see where the binding begins or ends. It's pretty awesome. Make sure you back stitch in the beginning and end. All right. If I did this right. <laughs> and I think I did. I'm shaking. I'm dancing. It's going to be nice and even. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm super excited. All right. So we're going to do, we're going to go around and just finish doing one fourth of an inch on that. I'm really like, if I'm like, why are you rambling? Because I was really afraid that I was going to mess up. 
Um, as you, if you do know, if you look at my videos at all, none of it really looks like it's edit because I suck at editing. My husband does most of the videos and he like, he can merge the videos if I have to like stop or pause because I'm a person that gets a lot of migraines or I don't like, to, I take medicine, anti-anxiety medicine. So when I take it at night, um, it makes me sleepy and I can't work on heavy duty machines. I'm accident prone as it is. Let's not add anything to it. So we'll stop. And he, he does all the recording and he puts the videos together. So it's kind of, it kind of is like a lie to me because I'm not going to like make a mistake, fix it off a camera and then come back. I want you to see that everybody makes mistakes and we can fix it. All right, so we're about to hit that corner. All right, so I'm going to trim threads. I'm really excited about this. And we're going to, she says that what she likes to do is she likes to pop. She likes to pop all the, the, the bias binding to make sure we caught all the stitching and it doesn't show previous work stitches. So we got that. And if there's like a place that doesn't, you can go over it to make sure it doesn't show previous stitches. Like I probably, cause there's the previous stitches showing here about one eighth of an inch. So I can take this over to my machine real quick and just go over that area. So that way it looks nice and neat from the inside out. I'm literally going to eat some cookies or something. I'm like really proud of myself right now. <laughs> like freakishly proud of myself. <laughs> As you hear my husband say, he'll make me some. I am like really excited because it's something, it's kind of like miter corners. Like I always freak out when I do them because I'm afraid that I'm going to mess up. All right. So this is, works out perfectly. We are going to take this to the machine and pop stitch. Now she does not clip. She said she uses her stiletto and if there's a wrinkle, um, she uses her stiletto to help with the, the bag curve around. And we're just trying to go over the previous line of stitching. Not, not like one fourth of an inch over. We're just trying to hide the previous line of stitching. So she uses her stiletto and I'm going to use mine and she just, with her stiletto, she just wraps this around and if there's a wrinkle, just shake it out with your stiletto. Like I learned a lot of tips with this bag. Do not get this green fabric at um, Joanne's, <laughs> even though it looks really pretty. Man, the fray is super real. Be careful around the corners. Don't be afraid to smush your bag. Any soft and stable has great memory and it will recover. Just, I'm just 
going, feeding the stiletto, rolling around the fabric, squishing down the bag, and, and kind of enjoying the process. I mean, you just got the bias binding on and your top stitching. If you're having blended thread similar to the um, the bias binding, it's okay if it's not exactly one eighth of inch. And let's say you got it like one sixteenth of inch or a little over one eighth of inch, and you're gonna be fine. I messed up on a spot, so I'm gonna just have to take out a couple of stitches and just redo that area. Trying to make sure everything gets tucked in. Okay, so there's an area that I majorly messed up on and that's okay. Because I could just rip out a few stitches and fix it real quick. I think I was so excited about doing bias binding that I forgot about my top stitching. <laughs> but I, I'm okay with it because I could just fix it real quick. And pop out a few stitches. Take my foot off the <laughs> the pedal. Have you ever just like not took your foot off the pedal while you were doing something and the sewing machine just started and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think that's about it. Ooh, those stitches are tight. I'll fix I mean, I guess that's a good part of sometimes the seam ripping is it comes out too loose. You're like, is my tension off on my on my sewing machine? Okay, and I'm just going to do this part over. I think I got all the stitches I need out. I should call it like monster for a man. This thing breaks bad. Okay. Trim those threads and then I'm going to back stitch and start and stop. these loose threads out of the way.
So if there's a wrinkle, she said use your stiletto and kind of just wiggle it and you it works. Trust Annie. <laughs> All right, so we got that weird part that I messed up on done. <laughs> and we're going to just repeat this process. Um, I'm kind of, I'm just really excited about it now. <laughs> Do all four corners. I'm going to unzip just a little so that way clip 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 and there you go I'm trying not to freak out over the binding it's either you're going to freak out or you're going to have like super confidence. And I want to vote for super confidence because I did it the first time. I'm going to be like, yeah, I can do it again. But we shall see. Pop a couple clips. As many as you want. Like I said, the, this is one of those easy gussets that... I think it's genius because everything lines up really, really, really nice. So I'm going to squish this and I'm going to do, like I said, scant one fourth of an inch where you're just a, a little under one fourth of an inch. It makes a huge difference with the binding. So just focus on raw edge with each raw edge. And don't be afraid to squish your bag. It will be fine. Take out your pens. So what I find interesting is normally when we're doing binding or just any kind of bag making, we're always cutting down the seams, like um, graded to like one fourth or one eighth of an inch or like one, you know, one one sixteenth, whatever the pattern designer has it. Annie doesn't really cut her seam allowance unless like you're doing the binding and let's say there was an area that's a little bit off to shape it. She recommends either, you know, ripping out the stitches and or you can trim down like a, a hair off so that way it can wrap around it helps with um with the um binding tremendously and the structure of the bag And I just ran out of bobbin. Let's see. I think I made another green one. If not, I will use. <laughs> oh, it's fine. It's all good. All right. Okay, 
So I'm just going to make sure I have all the seams. There's no, I like, I like her method of just flipping out the bag just to see if everything's encased. There's no soft and stable poking out or um, weird wonky stitch. And I think I sewed over two pins. Awesome. And this is why you don't see how they're all bent now. And I have I really like glass needle pins because you can iron over them and they won't rust. All right, so we're gonna do the five inch toe again. I'm just going to mark that with a ruler. Start in like right here, just like starting at a curve. Moving the bulk, squishing it. And using your stiletto or your fingers or whatever can help you sew sew, sew the um the bias binding on. Just squishing your bag. Need to check the thread. It sounds like it's catching. Let's see. Oh, it's right there. There's this thing called a whiplash um, that you could put inside your bobbin in case it does that, where like it kind of nests, it does like a bird nest. You can get them usually at a um, any sewing store or like so, like sewing machine plus. Just make sure it's your actual bobbin size. So there's those things that you can use, and they have they have they're called something different for a domestic. Like they're like a paper piece, and it, I think it's called like genie. I'm I forgot what it's called, but if you get sometimes where your bobbin is like nest like the t you feel like the tension is off or it's, it is right and um you're getting like it nesting or um, breaking off threads in the bobbin sometimes just like a whiplash can help tremendously We're almost done. I this is like the exciting part because your bag is getting its structure and it's kind of I want to say bony, but like it makes it gives the bag like tremendous structure.
So I'm only going to go like halfway to the this curve because it's not a really big curve, but it probably will make a huge difference when I do this next part when I try to perform magic. <laughs> All right, trimming these threads. All right. So without stabbing yourself with a pen, there's A and B. We're going to take B, pull it a little bit, and put it, put a pin or a clip where it ends. Then we're going to take A and lay it on top. I'm going to put a pin in this because it's kind of, the clip kind of gives it a little bit more um, seam, like a seam, a bigger seam than a pin. All right, so we're going to take A. If B can stay down, that would be awesome. <laughs> we're going to take A and put it on top. And we're going to take one pin and put it on the top that matches the top, the, the raw end right here. It's going to be the top. I'm gonna try to put it a couple, a couple layers to the first layer, and then on the second layer of um, B, we're gonna match to the the end point of A. We're basically making like the this reverse, so that way it could be seams together. So then we're you're going to open this up. And I'm going to do the same method I did last time. Um, if making a right angle, so that's 45 degrees. Smushing down my bag like it doesn't matter <laughs> right now. Getting this as flat as possible. And then I'm just going to use a chalk pencil. Okay, so like Annie did it like with a, um, with two pyramid or triangle, um, rollers and then just cut in the middle. I was like, what? <laughs> so I'm going to remove these two pins and I'm going to do each seam, each, um, we have a one fourth inch of a seam. So we're, we're going to connect A and B and they both need one fourth of an inch seam allowance. So I'm just going to put a half inch on this side so it can account for the one fourth seam allowance, one fourth of an inch. We're going to do the scary thing again and cut <laughs> into our bias on the seam allowance thing. So we have that half of an inch. We're going to move the remaining of our bias tape and not throw things down. And we're going to open both up totally gonna freak out again I just want you guys to know and pin these together pop a couple of pins um, in there without poking your finger like I just did and your dog ears are gonna be like one fourth of an inch on both sides and we're gonna go over to our machine and we are going to sew a one eight, one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure we backstitch. Hold on, we did it. We did it. We did it. All right. So I'm going to trim these little ears off that one fourth of an inch and we are going to finish it. We're going to do our one fourth of an inch around. Oh my God. It was so much easier the second time. <laughs> Go for the confidence. Okay. <laughs> um, we're going to do one fourth of an inch.
and backstitch. My bobby is acting don't me right now. I do not know why. It's like, hey, you're not matching threads, so let me act up. Let's see if it can just be nice till we finish this last part of the binding. Sometimes it happens when I was like that. All right. All right. So we trim our threads so that way it's not there. We're going to flip out and we're going to fold over the binding to go one fourth of the, not one fourth of the inch, to go over the previous line of stitching. You're not going to pull your binding so it's all over there. You're just wanting it to lay on top of the stitching that you just previously made. And there's no clips. You just kind of just start and go back stitch and remember to breathe use your stiletto owl pencil whatever helps you um fold over the fabric easily Just squishing down your bag, getting that, that bias binding over um, on the previous row of stitching. I'm not poking your finger with the stiletto, I promise you. <laughs> Let's see. It does get a little thick where the handle is, but you can do it. Have a hop jumper if it gets a little too thick for you or can crank it and go slow, but I'm telling you, I did this on my domestic and it was easy. If you have a walking foot, you can do that too because it feeds it feeds better than, uh, it feeds the, mach the, the fabric and all together from the bottom of the feed dogs and the walking foot on the top helps feed it evenly too. I like the stitching when I use a walking foot a lot. I have to remember to trim threads. I'm just flipping the binding over to make sure it covers everything. Paste those raw edges. We're handling those curves like a boss.
Now you could put wonder clips all over it if you want. Um, I kind of like how just using your stiletto and taking your time, it it works out. Yes, I messed up in the beginning, um, and you've seen it, but you also see how easy it is to like fix it. Like that to me is worth its weight in gold. I love to know I can repair something. I'm getting all these threads and burrs. Don't worry. I have like, seriously needs to get lint rolled. Okay. <laughs> so, time for big reveal. <laughs> We're going to turn, not, okay, I don't want to show you with all this thread on. <laughs> Just think, messy table means I'm currently working. We're gonna pop out all of these curves. Going to trim threads that are trying to poke out and be rude. And we have like this beautiful bag. Now what we're gonna you could do and what I'm going to do after this is you press it, give it a good press with some steam, and it even comes out in here. But look how adorable this is. You have a nice bag that all you used was foam, a little um sofies for the handles, the bi the binding gives this bag like boning and structure and it's nice and clean in the inside it's recoverable i mean it's a pretty fast bag to make too after you're done quilting it it's easy peasy like you could just do it and you see my struggle with the bias binding so now you know how to do it without the struggle and i also suggest you to go to annie's website and you download this pattern and um, with that, if you go into her section, she has a digital section that has free digital files. And um, she has, she does a whole video breaking down, getting to know this pattern as well as each section, like how to do the bias binding, how to install the zipper, how to install the handles. Like it's, it's pure genius. And this is a great bag. Like the holidays are coming up, like Halloween's here. Like what if, you know, some, some areas are going to be having trick or treating other areas or not. I have kids. You can like make them individual bags, maybe embroider their name or do like an apple pay. Like my daughter, I have two daughters, Faith and Hope. I could put an F on one and like fill it with candies and goodies. And this could be the trick or treat bag. Or if you wanted someone's birthday, like your father-in-law or your husband or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or whomever, you can make them a really nice toiletry bag and put like, all their favorite little things, whether it's cologne, perfume, hand salves, or um, cool hand crafting, or um, their crochet, you can put the needles and hooks. The possibilities are endless. Um, for the holidays, you can have everything embroidered and have each person have one. I think this is a really cool bag. And, or if you're doing craft marks and you're looking for a different pouch bag where people want something a little bit larger, this. I feel like this is very attractive. It has these nice round curves. It has a lot of structure, but at the same time, if somebody needs to put it in their suitcase or collapse, it's gonna, that is amazing. Um, I highly recommend this bag. I'm gonna put the description, in the description section, I'm gonna put um, by Annie's information and give you the link to get this pattern. It's, it's a free pattern. And I highly suggest after watching my video, maybe watching hers and getting some other patterns. Um, I love her as a designer. Like I said, I've had a couple, I have three classes on Craftsy from her and I have different patterns. I'm really, the theme that goes everywhere um, 2.0, I'm trying to make that because I want to have something. So when I go on sewing retreats or something, I have a really nice bag that has all my scissors and all of my favorite items. I use, I use foam a lot. I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a stabilizer interface junkie, just like a scissor and ruler junkie. 
Um, but I love foam. I love foam because it recovers better than anything else. I am not a fan of stabilizer that you iron on and it fuses. I'm not a fan of Pellon. I am a fan of um, any soft and stable because of its recovery. I like the fact that you can do it on your domestic machine and it's just, it's really cool. I am really enthralled with this bag and a little bit of quilting. It's driving me kind of mad that I know I couldn't line up for everything, but like it's a one and one eighth inch off from being perfectly straight on. <laughs> So, um, yeah, this is the bag. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. If you would like to see more bags that are um, by Annie Soft and Stable, please message me and I'll reach out to her and her team to see if I can do another um, tutorial. I appreciate you coming by. So if you can like, comment, share if you think it was worth enough, and subscribe and hit that notification button because I have some more treats before Halloween to give you. And until next time I see you, I hope everyone has a fantab fantabulous day. Fantastic. And I'll see you soon. Happy sewing. Bye.